Next on Current News, a major moment in American history might be looming after Alabama passes a bill to outlaw virtually all abortions. The Supreme Court could get involved. Tonight you'll meet Hugo and Juliet Morrell. I'll tell you about their inspiring story of faith and marriage leading up to an ordination. A critical time for Catholic education, the tablet's editor-in-chief, Jorge Dominguez, will talk about that as he previews the latest edition of the newspaper. A rousing rendition of Sister Act, the production made famous by Whoopi Goldberg. Tonight, Catholic students in Queens preview what they're calling a divine musical comedy. The news starts right now. Good evening, I'm Emily Druby. The U.S. Supreme Court could be getting back into the fight over Roe v. Wade. The nation's strongest bill to outlaw abortion is on the desk of Alabama's governor. If signed, backers of the law expect the new conservative majority on the high court to take another look at the ruling that legalized abortion. This is the first time in 46 years that the makeup on the Supreme Court has changed where there's possibly enough conservatives on there who would believe Roe v. Wade is incorrectly decided. A crowd convenes in Alabama's capital, waving signs and protesting the most restrictive abortion bill in the country. What do we do? Stand up like that. The passion you echoed in the Senate chambers. You just aborted the state of Alabama. You just raped Alabama with this bill. Alabama's bill bans abortion at every stage of pregnancy. Those seeking an abortion would not be punished, but doctors performing the procedure would face 99 years in prison. Women would only be able to get an abortion if their life is at risk. There is no exception for rape or incest. In my district, the women do not want it in law, the elimination of uh, rape and incest. Alabama joins four other states this year that passed bills limiting abortion and 11 other states that introduced similar legislation this year. We must do everything that we can to protect life. But the courts have intervened, stopping Kentucky's bill from going into effect and finding previous measures from North Dakota and Iowa unconstitutional. Alabama's lawmakers say their bill is specifically designed to go to the Supreme Court and challenge the law of the land Roe v. Wade. Keeping that bill as simple and as focused on the message to me was our goal. Legal experts say that direct challenges to Roe v. Wade are years from any Supreme Court hearing. Life is a gift of our creator and we must do everything that we can to protect life. Alabama State Senator Clyde Chambliss talking about the bill that would protect life in his state and outlaw virtually all killings of unborn children through abortion. If the governor signs the measure as expected, the law might wind up in front of the U.S. Supreme Court. Joining us now is the director of pro-life activities for the New York State Catholic Conference, Kathy Gallagher. Hello, Kathy. Alabama lawmakers are the latest to pass bills that would protect precious infants living in the mother's womb. Is this something Catholics should be hoping for? Well, yes. I mean, we support legislation that will provide the maximum protection possible for mothers and their unborn infants. So, yes. Um, I think the question is, you know, did Alabama go too far? Do you think Alabama went too far? Well, that's a question that the courts are going to answer. Um, you know, the U.S. Supreme Court has a bright dividing line right now, which is viability. And they say we can ban abortion after viability. But before viability, I don't know that there are enough justices on the court who would say it's okay to outlaw abortions before viability. Uh, I kind of doubt it. I think it's kind of a risky a risk to take to pass that kind of legislation that goes quite that far. Um, we prefer a much more incremental approach and kind of tinkering around the edges of Roe versus Wade to eventually topple it. My feeling is probably this law won't even make it up to the U.S. Supreme Court. I think lower courts are probably going to strike it um, and therefore the high court probably won't take it. And now in New York, and as we first reported yesterday in Vermont, there's extreme new laws that snuff out the lives of the unborn, even until the moments of birth. What can Catholics do to battle against laws like this? Well, you know, in a really 
evil, macabre way, the New York law has been good for educating people. People are outraged that late-term abortion and infanticide is actually legal and taking place in New York State. And it's moved public opinion in a pro-life direction. Um, I'm kind of afraid that the Alabama law might move public opinion in the opposite direction now. But more and more people are awake now, certainly here in New York State. Catholics are awake, they're alert, they want to be engaged. I think what we have to do is surround the woman who finds herself with an unplanned pregnancy with resources and assistance and support so that she would never even think of destroying the life of her unborn child. And now, Kathy, you say women are more awake now than ever. We also have new uh, justices on the bench. So do you think this is a pivotal point in history? Well, it is, certainly. Um, But I guess I would prefer if states took a a little bit slower approach and a more incremental approach to toppling Roe versus Wade. This is kind of what Alabama did is kind of like a knockout punch, and I'm not sure it's going to work. Why? Because they're pushing the envelope to see what the justices would do. I don't think Justice Roberts, as the chief justice, is ready to overturn Roe versus Wade. I don't even know that there's a majority on the court that would be ready to uphold something like that. Uh, So I think it would have been a smarter way to go to do something that uh, eliminated another method of abortion, perhaps, or pushed the viability a little bit farther, but not, you know, no abortions, uh, penalties up to 99 years in prison for physicians. I just don't think the court is ready for that. Thank you so much for your insight. Thank you. Tonight, new information about the number of babies who are born in the United States. There are fewer of them. The birth rate is at a 32-year low with less than 4 million infants born last year. That's according to preliminary numbers from the Centers for Disease Control. The biggest decrease was recorded in teen moms. CDC data shows that the U.S. population is not producing enough babies to replace itself, continuing a trend that started in 1971. An update tonight on the man accused of plotting an arson attack against St. Patrick's Cathedral. Manhattan prosecutors say 37-year-old Mark Lamparello has been found mentally unfit to stand trial. Lamparello allegedly carried two cans of gas into the cathedral, intending to start a fire. It's now up to the Manhattan DA to decide on how to proceed. Flames shoot through the front door of St. Cecil Piss Church in Paris. An arson attack in March is part of a growing list of violence targeting dozens of Catholic churches across Europe. Police are investigating, but so far they have no suspects for the crimes or a motive. The two teenagers accused of killing 18-year-old Kendra Castillo inside a school in Highlands Ranch, Colorado, were in court today. 18-year-old Devin Erickson faces 48 counts, including murder and gun charges, while the second suspect, 16-year-old Alec McKinney, is charged with murder as an adult. Prosecutors say the pair opened fire inside of the high school earlier this month. The two had been students at the school. Kendrick was laid to rest this afternoon, surrounded by family and the classmates who he sacrificed his life for. The burial was made possible with the help of the Knights of Columbus. Omar Jimenez has that report. A celebration of life for a hero. 18-year-old Kendrick Castillo was killed as he lunged toward a gunman during the shooting at his Denver area school on May 7th. I want you to remember the incredible young man that Kendrick was, and the incredible ways that he touched our lives. The fate of his actions are still painful for his friends and family, but his actions are credited with stopping other families from feeling that same pain. He died for us. Now, it's time for us to live for him. The accused gunmen were both students at the school and are both facing charges as adults charges that include murder and attempted murder. Now more than a week after the shooting that left one dead and eight others injured. Castillo was about a foot away from one of the shooters and immediately jumped into action, along with the help of two other students. He was a wonderful person. He was, you know, he he was going off to college. He was, he was doing great things. And it's truly a shame that he had to leave us so early. And it's truly a shame that he had to make that kind of decision. 
Meanwhile, students are slowly beginning to return to class to finish out the high school year and make the final stretch toward graduation, a milestone Kendrick Castillo, a hero, was only days away from. Omar Jimenez, Currents News. The Dallas police executed search warrants this morning at three Catholic dioceses of Dallas properties. The cops are looking for records of sexual abuse related to five priests. In furtherance of these investigations today, we obtained and executed multiple search warrants to collect any data or documentation of previous reports or records of abuse that may be held by the Dallas Catholic Diocese. In January, every diocese in Texas released the names of all clergy accused of sexually abusing minors going back to the 1940s. A Dallas diocesan spokesperson said the church has been cooperating with authorities for months. A new development tonight as tensions between the United States and Iran get hotter. Americans are being evacuated from the U.S. Embassy in Iraq. The pullout involves non-emergency staff and comes out of fear Iran could stage attacks. Friction between Washington and Tehran has been growing and the U.S. has deployed a carrier strike group to the region. Dramatic moments as a large basket holding two window washers was swinging wildly out of control this morning in an Oklahoma City skyscraper. The men were more than 800 feet above the street when the lift hoisted the basket broke loose. Emergency crews were able to rescue the men after about 45 minutes. The pair suffered minor injuries but are okay. There's a lot more news headed your way. I'll tell you the inspiring story of the Morels. It's about their faith, their marriage, and an upcoming ordination. The talented students at St. Mary Gate of Heaven Catholic Academy are putting on a show, one you won't want to miss. We'll have the details. And there's so much to preview in the tablet. Right now, awards are being handed out, the result of a contest all parents and students in the diocese should know about. They're a remarkable couple, Hugo and Juliet Morel. After years of hard work, they each achieved master's degrees in theology, and soon Hugo will be ordained. The couple tells me their faith in marriage gave them the strength needed to achieve these accomplishments. The married couple that studies together stays together. Also, we can write about this one. Juliet and Hugo Morel recently graduating with their master's in theology from St. Joseph's Seminary tackling the difficult course load the way they do everything as a team. I rely on her a lot. Without her, I wouldn't be able to do it. And thanks God for her. In May, Hugo will be ordained as a permanent deacon in the Diocese of Brooklyn, meaning he's a clergy member who is allowed to be married and can perform sacraments like weddings and baptisms. He can also proclaim the gospel and preach at mass, among other ministries. The road to his ordination and their master's degrees has not been smooth. The couple has faced plenty of struggles, like his commute and a language barrier. Every day I had to come from downtown, downtown Brooklyn, take three trains. It was hard. In the beginning, we thought it's going to be in Spanish. And I say, okay, in Spanish, I can handle. It's going to be hard, but I can handle in Spanish. But then when we found out it was in English, um, that was like, uh, I don't know, maybe. They had some important help to get through it all. I pray a lot. I pray a lot. God helped me, sent me angels around me and helped me to accomplish that. For years, the Morels kept their faith on a back burner, the family rediscovering it after being hit hard by the 2008 recession. Now faith is the cornerstone of their lives. Without my faith, I cannot do nothing. It's like, a, because when I have problems, um, I know I can overcome that because God is with me. It's our life, it's what we're going to pass to our kids, but we want them to love God. The Morels are proof. With a partner by your side and faith, you can accomplish anything. That diaconate ordinations will take place on Saturday, May 25th at 11 a.m. from St. Joseph's Co-Cathedral at 856 Pacific Street in Brooklyn. The ordinations will be televised live on Net TV beginning at 11 a.m. It's almost showtime for one group of elementary students in the diocese. Just take me, please. The bright lights are shining once again on St. Mary Gate of Heaven Catholic Academy, this time for the Catholic favorite made famous by Whoopi Goldberg, 
sister act. The students got out all their jitters and stage fright with a run through before the curtain goes up this weekend. The musical comedy is about a disco diva who witnesses a murder and goes into protective custody, disguising herself as a nun. Filled with powerful gospel music, outrageous dancing, and all the energy of young people, the play is promised to make everyone rejoice. For over 40 years, the Academy has hosted shows that have become more than just a school event, but now attract thousands of people from all over Queens. It's just not a show, it's actually a learning experience. They learn stage left, stage right, how to get on, how to get off, listen to the cues. I think it's really fun and it brings us all together. Just being here with everybody and enjoying all the time we spend during practice. It's really fun hanging with your friends at practice and seeing what happens, what parts of the show could be added next and dancing and things like that. The Academy says they are lucky to have such talented students, but also to have the chance to work with both a professional director and choreographer. They can't wait to break a leg. You can catch the performance of Sister Act, a divine musical comedy, this Friday, May 17th at 7 p.m. and again on Saturday, May 18th at 7 p.m. at St. Mary Gate of Heaven Parish, located at 104-06 101st Avenue in Ozone Park. The Tablet's editor-in-chief, Jorge Dominguez, joins us for a preview of the latest edition of the paper. There's a lot to talk about tonight. The importance of Catholic education, a special pull-out section, something new about a great tradition in the diocese, and an award ceremony that's happening right now. Let's start with Catholic education. The news that Bishop Kearney All Girls High School will close after this year is a warning about the future. The Tablet is tackling this important story. It's even on your front page. What can you tell us about it. Well, it is on the front page. It's very sad news, but it's very important news. Every week we, you know, we, we have news about the, the success and the good things that are going on in our Catholic schools. This week is a sad news, but at the same time it's a, it's a wake up call. It's to, to remind everybody that we need to support Catholic education because those are the consequences when we, we, they don't have the, our support. And, you know, uh, we have to learn to, from things like this, and this is why the, the, the news is in the front page. It's a very sad news, very, very important news. There's also a special pull-out section in the tablet. Can you tell us about that? Well, that's something that is, is always so nice to do. We do this pull-out every year. It's for the jubilarians. It's the priests of the diocese that are arriving at 25th, 50, you know, some big anniversary uh, in their, you know, life as priests. And we have to say thank you. We have to say thank you for all the service, all the years of service to the people and to the church. And it's always a joy to, you know, to read the bios, to the interesting thoughts be, be behind those stories. It, it, is, it is thrilling and it's our duty to say thank you. And you're also highlighting a new twist taking place this year involving a great tradition in the Brooklyn Diocese, the Gilio Feast. Well, the Gilio Feast is, is, a, is a great event in, in, in Williamsburg for more than 100 years. It, thousands of people go there. You know, it, they have a four-ton structure that they, they carry around the streets. They need 100 men. They're always men. We have to, to break that, that, that glass ceiling. 100 men to, to carry this, this, the, um, this, this structure. And today, this year, they need more volunteer, volunteers to do that. So they have like a contest to see who is going to carry the Gilio. And talk to us a little bit about the Tablets Easter Art Contest that's happening right now. Yes, this is happening right now. We have every every year we have the Easter Art Contest. The students from, from first grade to, to high school in our Catholic schools participate more than 500 entries. You know, it is a great event and it's happening right now, the awards Jorge, ceremony. Thank you so much for joining us. The Tablet needs your support to ensure that Catholic journalism will thrive well into the future. You can do so by subscribing to the Tablet tablet so that it comes right to your mailbox. You'll save up to 55% by having it delivered to your home versus paying for it at church. Go to the website thetablet.org slash home 55 or call 877-883-8356. And the tablet has a brand new page called Our Diocesan Family where you can share your pictures of recent baptisms, holy communions, confirmations, marriage, all of the joyous sacraments. For more details and to submit your photos, go to the tablet.org slash our diocesan family. Your picture may be published in an upcoming issue of the newspaper. 
A wonderful report will be on Currents News next week. It involves the tablet Bishop DiMarzio and Michael Bobro. The bishop was always very kind to respond to my letters very kindly. Michael was inspired to write Bishop DiMarzio after he first sent a letter to the tablet. That sparked a friendship between the bishop and Michael, who now correspond regularly. We'll have the heartwarming story on Currents News next week. Starting today, visitors at JFK Airport can go back in time to the golden age of jet travel. The famed TWA terminal has been converted into a grand hotel. The building was dedicated in 1962 and then closed in 2001 when TWA went out of business. The terminal has undergone an extensive restoration and has a new place in aviation history. I think it's the biggest moment in New York architecture. Uh, I mean, if you study architecture in Cairo, you study this building. If you study architecture in Tokyo, you study this building. Everybody studies this building because you could never build this building today. And a tip for viewers at home who are thinking of staying at the TWA Hotel. If you look at this map, you'll see an interesting note in the lower left corner. You're reading that correctly. That's the Pope's room. This was the area where Pope Paul VI, the first pope to fly a plane and travel to America, would stay while he rested between flights in 1962. Still to come on Currents News, it's a joyride at the Vatican. We'll tell you about the Pope and who he picked as his passengers. And the story of high schoolers who are helping a six-year-old have fun. We'll be right back. Pope Francis took some lucky kids for a joyride around the Vatican this morning. As he was greeting pilgrims in St. Peter's Square, the Holy Father spotted a group of refugee children from Libya. Inviting them onto the Pope Mobile for a spin around the square, he also preached about the risen Christ's first greeting. Pensate che il primo saluto di Gesù risorto è pace a voi. Pace alle vostre anime, ai vostri cuori, alle vostre vite. Il Signore ci dà la pace, ci dà il perdono, ma noi dobbiamo chiedere liberaci dal male, per non cadere nel male. At the end of the audience, the Pope once again acknowledged all the pilgrims who came from all over the world to listen to his catechesis, asking them to do penance for and pray both for the conversion of sinners and peace in the world. A kindergartner who was recently left in a wheelchair after a car accident got a special surprise from a local high school. Nate Borisma's favorite outdoor activity is playing in a sandbox. But after his accident, his family didn't think it would be possible for him to enjoy anymore until a woodshop class stepped in. One of Nate's teachers let us know that he was kind of looking for a sandbox. Uh, and the week before, Lowe's donated a bunch of the material so it all just came together like the perfect storm of goodness. The high school woodshop students made a specialized sandbox just for Nate as part of a service day project so that he can play outside with the rest of his friends. That is Currents News. I'm Emily Druby. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. Hope to see you again next time.